and welcome to Bake Good. Today we'll be making trifle. We have a vanilla berry trifle and we have a chocolate cherry trifle. We'll go step by step on cake, pudding, and whipped cream. Thanks for joining us. Here we go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is make the vanilla cake for the berry trifle. So this is just a basic vanilla recipe, nothing fancy because we'll be putting so many other flavors in it. So we're going to start with a stick of butter. And to that we're going to add a cup and a half of sugar. And we're going to beat this together. We need it all. It's a little humid today so things are stuck. We're going to beat this together till it's light and fluffy. Oh, it would help if you plug in your mixer. Okay, now that we've plugged in our mixer, here we go, round two. So we have our butter in the bowl and a cup and a half of sugar, and we're going to mix them until they're light and fluffy. And I know that's a generic term, but trust me, when you see that it's light and fluffy, you know what they mean. You want all the sugar to be incorporated into all the butter. You don't want hunks. So when that's all set, we're going to add two eggs to this. And you always want to put your eggs in one at a time. Even when using a mixer like this, you really want to make sure they get incorporated well. So you don't want to just dump them in. So you want to do it one at a time. All right, we're just going to give this a little bit more because it really makes a difference. All right, the butter was pretty soft, so I think it's ready. I'm going to put in one egg. Let that get really well incorporated. I'm going to put the other egg in. And this recipe calls for two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm just using a generic vanilla today. We've discussed sometimes I use Mexican vanilla, Madagascar vanilla, it depends. But this is just a generic because there'll be so many other flavors. But we do want two teaspoons because we want it to taste good. All right, there we go. All right, we're going to let that just mix up a little bit. I think I'll scrape it down, make sure we have everything. You don't want little bits of things. Get all that goodness in there. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I have two cups of flour, just all purpose flour, nothing fancy. We're going to put a teaspoon of baking powder in the flour and we're gonna put a half a teaspoon of baking soda. To that, we also need a quarter teaspoon of salt. And what I like to do is just take the whisk and just incorporate it again a little bit, get it mixed around so you don't have a big lump of salt in one pot and not the others. All right, we're going to add this to our butter and sugar mixture with some buttermilk. This is a cup and a third of buttermilk and it makes all the difference. It'll give your cake a little tang. Um, I usually like to end with milk and start with flour. I don't know what it is about it. It just makes a good texture on the cake. So we're going to turn our mixer down very low because we don't want flour all over the kitchen, which I've done many, many times. And we'll add our flour in maybe three pots we'll try for. And the same with the buttermilk. Just to keep it mixing up really well. Part of that, the rest of our buttermilk. Now I want to make sure this is mixed and incorporated really well, but as always when you're using a mixer, I'm going to just scrape it down, make sure everything's in there, and maybe turn it up a little higher to whip it up a little bit. My favorite spatula, use it for everything. I'll just let that get a little bit more fluffy. All 
All right, this is gonna fill two nine inch cake pans. Now, can you see the texture on the cake? It's nice and incorporated. It's pretty light. You shouldn't see any ingredients. It should all be one color. Just give it a whirl. Make sure there's nothing, nothing that didn't make the grade. All right. So we're gonna spray our pans. I don't know if anybody has ever um, used this product, Baker's Joy. I can't say enough good things about it. It's actually the same as any other nonstick spray, but it has flour in it. So you don't have to spray and flour your pans. You can just spray them and it works very well. I've used it hundreds and hundreds of times. There's no issues. You just wanna make sure you get in the cracks and the crevices and cover the whole pan because wherever you don't hit it, that's where your cake's gonna stick. <laughs> it's a fantastic product. All right. Now I know a lot of people will measure out the cake batter and make sure that they're even. I'm just not that kind of baker and where this is for a trifle, I'm probably gonna cut up the cake into little squares anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But for cooking purposes, you, you know, you want them to cook at the same time. So it, it isn't too hard to just eyeball it and do half in each pan. Let's see how we can do. Now, oftentimes I don't even bother to spread it out. I'll hit it on the counter a couple times for air bubbles or anything. But it's going to spread out on its own anyway. Unless it's a shaped cake pan, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to put these in the oven, and we'll be back in a minute to start our chocolate cake. So now we're going to make the chocolate cake. This is a little bit of a different recipe. It's a German chocolate cake, and you'll see it has a little bit of a different technique. I'll try to explain as we go along. And I picked this just because it would have a little bit of a different flavor, and it'll hold up against all the other sweet. So it's going to start with a cup of butter, which is two sticks. And it's so humid today, I did not have to melt anything or get it to the right temperature. You want all that butter, because that's what makes it good. And this seems like a lot, but it's pretty good. Two cups of sugar. Let's give that a whirl. As soon as that gets incorporated, we're going to put a teaspoon of vanilla in there. Turn it up a little bit. Even though it's soft, we want to make sure it's nice and light and fluffy. That looks about right. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla. Again, I'm just using a basic vanilla because this has a, this trifle's gonna have a lot of flavor, so you don't wanna waste anything fancy on it. All right, so here's where things get a little different. So this recipe calls for four eggs, and they have to be separated. So I'm gonna put in four egg yolks right now. And again, we're gonna try and do one at a time. It's okay if an extra one falls in. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. I just think as far as incorporating it, this is the way to go. All right. So what I have here is four ounces of German chocolate. You must have seen it in the store, you know, it has the little old lady on it we're all so used to. And this was an odd technique I haven't even seen. You melt it with a half a cup of water. And you can see it's a very loose texture, but I find in chocolate cake, this makes it very, very good because it'll actually steam and have a really, really nice texture. So we're gonna incorporate that. And we had cooled this down after we melted it because we don't want scrambled eggs in our, in our cake. So I'm going to add this little by little. 
And boy, does it smell good. There aren't that many things in life that can't be solved by butter, sugar, and cocoa. At least if you're having a bad day. Right, we're going to scrape it down because we want all that chocolate goodness. I'm going to scrape it down on the sides and because you can see it, it sticks to the paddle a bit. You want to make sure you get everything incorporated before we go further. A little bit on the sides and underneath. Make sure it's hitting everything. Scrape all that good stuff back in there. Turn it up. Hopefully you can get it incorporated a little better. All right, that looks good. So here I have two and a half cups of cake flour. Now, usually I use all-purpose flour. I'm only using cake flour because this recipe um, calls for it. The only difference I find is you get a little bit of a finer texture on your cake, but I really don't find much difference. I think also that cake flour just adds a little bit of cornstarch to the flour. I think that's the only difference between all purpose. But if the recipe does call for it, I, I tend to use it because sometimes I'm sure there's something that I don't know. So to our two and a half cups of cake flour, we're going to put a teaspoon of baking soda in our little fancy cups. And then we're going to put a half a teaspoon of salt. And again, I have my little whisk. I just like to make sure it's all incorporated. No big hunks or surprises anywhere. Okay, and just like the other cake, we're using buttermilk. And we're going to try and, and start with the flour and end with the buttermilk. So we have a cup of buttermilk. And we'll turn our mixer on low. Try and keep it in the bowl. This is my favorite batter bowl because it's like it was made for this. Put a little milk in there. A friend of mine gave me this bowl, and if she, she had any idea how much I use it, that I love it. All right, the rest of the flour, we want it all in there. And the rest of the buttermilk. And as you can see, I can be pretty messy, but it's just part of baking. All right, before I turn this on high to try and whip a little bit of air in there, I'm just going to scrape it down again because there's a little flour on the sides. And what a nice color, huh? It looks very, very good. It does look like it's incorporating very, very well. All right, let's give it a whirl. That looks very good. The texture looks fantastic. You know that's going to be a nice cake. All right, so this one differs a little bit also in that we're going to use a 13 by 9 inch pan. So I'm, like, as I said, I'm going to be cutting this up for cubes anyway, so it, it really doesn't matter the shape to me. but. Sometimes you have to follow the pan size in the recipe because it can really make a difference if you're doing other things. So I have here my 13 by 9 inch. And again, we're going to break out the Baker's Joy, best stuff ever. It's like WD-40 for the kitchen. And we're just going to give it a spray. Make sure you get your sides. This looks like it'll fill up a good amount when it's cooking. And we won't have to measure anything because it's all going in one pan. The little joys in life. Let's move our mixer over here. You can see my little cheat sheet. I don't want to tell you the wrong, wrong amount of ingredients. Oh, there is one thing I forgot. I just realized since I said ingredients, I have one ingredient left here. So as I mentioned, we had to do separate the four eggs. So the four egg, the egg yolks went in with the sugar and butter. I whipped up the four egg whites just till they were about a stiff peak. You can see they're, they're not loose at all. And this is going to get folded into the batter. 
it'll give it a really nice light airiness. The texture should be fantastic. Now you don't want to just mix this in because there's no sense in putting in the egg wipes if you're going to just stir them in. It really has to be a fold. I do a little cut in half and fold. You just want to incorporate them. You don't want to break up all that nice air that you whipped into the eggs. It's okay to see a little bit of white, but you really want to try to get it all in there. Now, I don't generally like recipes that have you do this because I, I, I do find it, you know, an extra step that you really don't have to do unless you're doing something special. But I am going to a special party tonight and bringing these trifles, so I don't mind going the extra step. And like I said, it, does, it gives it that little something. It changes the texture. It is a little labor intensive, but it'll be worth it when it's done. We're almost there. And you can see it has changed the texture of the batter. Make sure you get all the way down the bottom without dropping it on your feeder, as I almost just did. All right, and you, you don't want any big hunks. So just make sure it's incorporated, but that does look pretty good. It's okay to see a little bit. All right, let's put this in our pan. It did make it a very nice texture. I'm sure that comes across on the camera. It's starting to smell pretty good in here. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned that the first cake was on 350 for about 30 minutes. This will go in. This is a bigger, bigger pan, bigger cake. This also will go on 350, but uh, it'll probably take more 45 to 50 minutes. I do have a convection oven, so, you know, it could be a little less, but you know, you know your own oven. Sometimes you just have to test it at the end. All right, I'm going to get this in the oven and we'll come back and do some pudding. Okay, so I'm going to show you my method for pudding. I wish I could just go back and forth through the kitchen, but that would be awful hard. I make a cornstarch pudding. This is very similar in like what you would get in the box pudding aisle. This is, um, it has a strange method. So on the stove, I have four cups of milk and I just want to scald the milk a little. You don't want it boiling. You just want it till it's got bubbles around the edges because I need about four cups of pudding. Now this is going to be for the vanilla pudding, but the only difference, I'll tell you as I do it with the chocolate and the vanilla is adding a little cocoa powder. So there's a little bit of a different, different thing to this. And it's very important. Anybody that's worked with cornstarch before probably knows this. You have to get it all mixed and incorporate it into something cold before you put it into anything hot. If you don't, you're just going to have a big bowl of lump. So here I have six tablespoons of cornstarch. Now, I happen to be using cornstarch pudding like that for my trifles, but they would be just as great with custard or really anything. That's the great thing with trifles. You can do any flavors. You can mix up all kinds of things different whipped creams and Cool Whips and whatever floats your boat. All right, so of course it's sticking. It's a very hot day today. All right, to this I'm gonna add two thirds of a cup of sugar. And again, this is to make four cups of pudding. You could half it if you ever needed to. I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit, get it together. Now, do follow us on Facebook or Instagram. It's Baked Good Cooking Show. If you need any recipes, any tips, any questions, if you want to see me make a bigger mess. Um, and this is a half a teaspoon of salt. You always need a little salt in anything that's that sweet. It just balances it a bit. All right, so that's mixed pretty good. So I'm going to put a quarter cup of milk. Now, I used whole milk. I know some people like to use skim, 2%, whatever. But we're talking pudding here, and sometimes it's better to have the real thing and have a little bit of the real thing than skimp on it. So we're going to mix this, and what we're trying to do is make this smooth before we incorporate it into the scalded milk. So if you have any lumps here, you're going to have lumps in your pudding. 
So it's worth taking the extra minute. You can see it does, even with just a quarter cup of milk, it does break down really nice. Now the only difference, this is for my vanilla pudding, and when this is cooked, when the pudding's all cooked, I'm going to put the, add this to the scalded milk. I'm going to whisk it in for a while, make sure it's smooth, bring it to a boil. You only boil it for about a minute, just until it's thickened. You'll know it's thickened if it's coating the back of your spoon. So when that's all done, I'm going to put a, a couple of teaspoons of vanilla for my vanilla pudding. Now if I was making chocolate pudding, when I put the cornstarch and the sugar in here, I would have put a half a cup of cocoa. Now, cocos do vary, but it's really up to you. I use all different kinds, and I find Hershey's just as good as anything else. But I do, sometimes I do like to get the expensive ones, but that's the only difference into making the chocolate or the vanilla. So you can see this is nice and smooth now. There's no lumps. I'm gonna go add this to my milk, cook it down till it gets thick, and then we'll be back. All right, now we're going to make some whipped cream. Now I am going to make two versions of whipped cream. The first we're going to make is chocolate whipped cream because you can't have enough chocolate. So <laughs> this trifle will literally be chocolate cake, chocolate pudding, chocolate whipped cream, but the cherries will break it up. So I put my bowl and my beater in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. It just makes it easier. I have two cups of heavy cream. You can use whipping cream too, but heavy cream will do the same thing in my little friendly jar here. So we're going to put that in. Now at first, even with one of these mixers, this stuff can go everywhere. So what I do is I drape a towel over my mixer so it doesn't end up coated in the whole kitchen. And we're going to turn this up really high till it starts to get a little thick. And trust me, many times I have had it all over the walls. You learn as you go. And this way too, you can peek a little, to see if it's doing anything. I know that's an annoying sound, but there's no other way to do it. Uh, it doesn't appear to be doing too bad. I have here a quarter of a cup of confectionery sugar. I'm going to just turn this down a little so it's not all over the place. I'm going to sprinkle that in for a little sweetness, but we don't want this too sweet because as we mentioned, we already have a lot of sweet things going on. I also have a quarter cup of cocoa powder, same cocoa powder I used for the cake. This is Hershey's. And we're going to put that in. And actually, we seem to be whipping up awful quick there. Must have been because it was so cold, so I'm going to turn it on low while we put that in. Usually it takes a couple minutes, but if everything is right, the last thing we want to put in is a little bit of vanilla, just to give it, vanilla and chocolate go very well, just to give it that little extra taste. All right, you might want a tad more of that. That's probably the quickest whipped cream I ever did, but it's a very hot and humid day, as I've mentioned. So let me, I'm going to actually scrape down the sides. See, you can already see it's very thick. Usually it would take me a good, I don't know, three minutes to get to that stage. But I'm going to put cherries in this and everything else, so it, it, it'll be okay. Just mix it till we can't see the white anymore. All right, I don't dare mix it any more than that. That's probably the quickest whipped cream I've ever done. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to make vanilla for the berry trifle. And the only thing I'm gonna do is still do the quarter of a cup of confectioner sugar and a little bit of vanilla and that's it. All right, so I'll see you back in a few minutes. So we're back with all the components of our berry trifle. Um, so first we're going to cut the cake into little bite-sized squares using a nice serrated knife. It makes it a little easy. Now the cakes are probably a little more done than I would have wanted to, but it actually works out for this recipe because we got pudding and fruit and a lot of liquid in there, so it actually might be well. And all these little brown bits are really caused from the butter, so I think it's going to be pretty tasty. So 
it really can be any size. That's the nice thing of a trifle. It can't do it wrong. I'm going to go for maybe a half inch square. It smells really good. Too bad we didn't have smell vision All right, let's cut up the second one. Yeah, it's probably a little crusty, but that is what happens when you do a few things at a time. This did have a lot of components to it, but I promise you it's completely worth it in the end. And it's all right if it tears because it's going to be covered in pudding and whipped cream and berries, and I don't think anybody will complain. All right, so I don't think that it really matters, but for some reason I think that cake, pudding, berries, and then whipped cream seems like the way to go. I suppose it could go either way, but I think that would be okay. All right, let me just push this up so we can get ourselves a bowl. Now I am going to a party tonight, and since I'm bringing both kinds, I had to find two bowls that match, of course. So you'll notice they're similar. So what we're gonna do is take one of these cakes and put it, spread it around the bottom of our bowl. I assure you I've washed my hands 30 times during the filming of this episode. All right, because we're hoping to make a good two layers, so. Spread it out evenly. It does look pretty if you can see it on the sides. All right, then I think we're going to go in with half of our pudding. Now, the pudding's still a little warm, but for purposes of filming this episode, I'm going to do this, and it's going to sit in the fridge for a couple hours before I go to my potty, so it'll be fine when it's done. But just if you think it looks a little looser, you might have liked it a little thicker. It will be when it's cool. Now, I'm going to kind of go around the edges because it looks really pretty when you can see it, see the layers in the bowl, and then I'll worry about the middle. So I'm going to use about half of this and use half for the next layer. Just try to get that definition because it does really look nice when you're walking up to it. And then we'll just put some in the middle and smear it around a little bit. All right. And then we're going to do some berries. Now I made these berries. Again, they might look a little loose, but they're going to thicken up when it gets cold. I just got a big bag of mixed berries at the store. I added a cup of sugar, about two teaspoons of orange rind, and about a fourth of a cup of orange juice. And trust me, they taste really good. So we're going to do the same thing. I want to kind of go around it in a circle, get that definition of layer before we fill it in. So this is a mixture of strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. It seemed kind of fitting. It's been a very hot day. We're in the middle of June. I probably made too many berries, but one can never have too many berries. So we're going to fill that in a bit. Oh, and I did, I just cooked this down until it coated the back of a spoon. So by the time it was boiling, I would say it might have boiled for about 20 minutes altogether. And then as it cools, it does get a little thicker. All right. Because that's not enough, now we're going to go in with our vanilla whipped cream. And this is how our vanilla whipped cream came in. We just put about two teaspoons of vanilla and again a quarter cup of confectioner's sugar. All right, so this is going to start to get pretty messy, but again, I think it's okay. So I don't think there'll be enough to go all the way to the edges, so I'm just going to do my, my best to spread it out and kind of get a whole layer without making too much of a mess here. We don't want anybody to be skimped on the whipped cream. Not too bad. Usually by now I get all the berries all over it. Can throw a little more in for the layer because the top can really be decorative. All 
and I know it would be easy to use Cool Whip or something, which I've done if I'm, if I'm in a rush, but there is nothing like real whipped cream. All right, and we're just going to start that process again. Let's go in with some more cake. I'm hoping this will be a hit at the party. It's got a little something for everybody. All right. Now it has got wider at the top of the bowl. I'm not sure if we can get all the way over for the aesthetic look, but you can already see that at the bottom, so I'm not gonna worry. I am gonna grab all these crumbs because this is the good stuff when you get those little crumbly pieces. All right, now we're gonna go in with the rest of our pudding. And as this will be the first thing you see like the top, I think I'm gonna start this time from the middle out, just aesthetically so it looks nice. We'll see how far we can get out to the edge. We don't wanna waste any of this pudding. It smells fantastic. Now it's funny, when I was telling a few people I was doing this episode, a few people did not know what trifle is. And it is something we used to do a lot of times at Christmas in our house. So I guess I was used to it, but a lot of people had never heard of it. I think it's an English dish, and it was always what you would do with maybe your day old bread and a little bit of extra pudding and whipped cream, but there's so many variations, you can literally do anything. We do have more berries, so I think I'm going to come out this way with them. Again, I'm just thinking about how people are going to see this when they first walk up to it. So although it looks like a messy dish, we want it to look like it has a rhyme and a reason. And there might be enough berries to cover the top because there was quite a bit here. I don't think people will care if there's extra berries. All right. Now I was afraid this would not be enough, but now I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> this is a lot here. All right. Although I have a little bit left, I'm thinking that's an awful lot. I think we're gonna stop there. I don't think it would hurt it, but I think that's just what I'm going to do. Now, since this is what we have left for the whipped cream and it's a top, I'm going to put it all in the middle and try and smooth it out without touching the berries, just so it doesn't look mixed. If I tried to do it in little dollops, I don't think I'd have such luck. All right. So maybe a little something like this, maybe a little swirl, just so it'll look nice. Oh. We might be a little full on our berries over there. Let's see if we can move them along. I want you to know things do go wrong and it's okay. It's just the way it is. Not everything comes out perfect. I don't like when they lead you to believe it does. Right. Not bad, it looks pretty good. Oop, got a little berry there. Let's see if I can cover that up. All right, I think I'm not going to mess with it too much. I think we're going to leave it at that. All right, so this is our vanilla berry trifle. And I'll be back in a minute and we'll make the chocolate one. All right, here we are with our chocolate version. This cake came out very well too. It's still a little warm, but again, we're going to put it in the fridge. Um, it's awful deep, so I think I'm going to go a little bit halfways first. Now remember, it's a trifle. It doesn't have to be exact. If anybody's measuring your cubes, tell them they can't eat your food. So I'm going to do that before I go in and cut strips just like the other cake. And because we put those egg whites in, it has a really nice texture. It's very spongy. I think it's going to be great in this trifle. And that German chocolate really does give it a different taste. I forget what it is about German chocolate. It, it, it is a little higher in cocoa, but 
it does it just has a different taste all right so let's get some cubes and it has a few of those edges just like a brownie I think people are gonna appreciate that I know it looks like a mess but you've seen what we're gonna do to it so it's okay all right almost there all right let's get our bowl and do some prep all right we're gonna take half our cake for some reason i always start on the left Wow, that's nice. It smells very good. All right. Just move that around so we have some nice room for all the other good stuff. All right. Gonna go in with our chocolate pudding. And let's concentrate on our layers being shown, that first layer. I was worried this would be too much chocolate on chocolate, like monotone, but if you're a chocolate lover, I can't explain it. It's okay. It would never turn me off of something. All right, let's get a little to the middle. Let's try and smooth that out so we have plenty for the next layer. Don't want to dip anybody. All right, for this one, I bought canned cherries. Now, I could do the same thing and buy the frozen cherries, but I honestly, there's something about the texture of these. They're just right, especially for this kind of thing. And it would be way too much work to pitch your own cherries and do the whole thing. I have been known to do that, but it would have to be for something special. So these are absolutely fine, and it's very cost effective also. So we're going to go around the center, same thing. I find most people are going to dig from the edge anyways. Usually half is gone from one edge. And then towards the end, it's all just a big mix anyways. All right. Let's spread that out a little more. Put some in the middle. I actually was thinking of some raspberries, but my son likes the cherries. It was his suggestion, and since he's going to be there, cherries it is. All right. One down. So now we need a whipped cream, and here's our chocolate whipped cream that we made. I'm going to try for the same thing around. This is a little thicker. I'm sure it's from the cocoa powder, so. Let's see if we can make it without making too big of a mess. Ha ha ha. I don't think nobody will see. Bring some in. It is a little thicker, but I think it'll all end up melding together. Do some to the middle, bring it around. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to know. Sometimes I get into that mode too, and I feel like it has to be, but I find I'm the only one that really cares. All right, in with the rest of the cake. Cake's still a little warm, it feels awesome. Just place it over so it covers everything. This cake was a little more, so our bowl is a little more full. I'll just have to take care and heap everything up in the middle. So we don't have spillage like the berries. All right, we want all these nice crumbs. All right. So here we go with some more pudding. 
and I'm going to put it around in a circle. Going for that aesthetic look. I'm hoping this will be a hit. Still gonna have whipped cream on it, so you don't have to go too crazy. All right. Oh, almost forgot the cherries. Can't forget the cherries. Let's do the same thing and start from the middle this time. That way, it'll they'll hopefully all be even. Whether you go in at the edge or the middle, just try and get somewhat of a circle. every drop. All right, then we're going to go in with our whipped cream. Like it's not enough already. Here we go. Now I definitely think this is going to be enough. I was really worried, but sometimes the components look, you know, not that big all together or I should say separate, and then when everything's together, it's a lot of, lot of food. I have to remember that. So I'm gonna smooth this out as best as I can. It was a little thick, but just to get a nice look. All right, I think that's gonna do it. And there you have it. Chocolate trifle, chocolate cherry trifle, I should say. Look for us on Facebook and Instagram, Bake Good Cooking Show, if you have any questions, comments, would like any recipes, anything at all. See you next time.